Celtic is upset with the 100 million euro valuation from Shaq to the next. Arsenal transfer target. Mikhailo Mudrik admits he was shocked and upset by Shaq to the next valuing him at 100 million in brackets 87.5. So maybe they're doing that so they can get the 50. But as you know, the 21 year old has attracted interest from several clubs across Europe in the summer, and his performances for Shaq in the Champions League this season have made him increasingly in demand ahead of the January transfer window, in which, you know, Hopefully we get him and Danilo Telemans in the summer. I, I do want Telemans sooner rather than later if we do want him. But yeah, Arsenal have been heavily linked with a, with a move for Mudrick, but the Gunners could now be put off after the Shatters director of football, Dario Serna, the former fullback, suggested this week that the winger could command a transfer fee of €100 million, Euros, which is £87.5 million, pound, allegedly. If somebody wants... Otherwise, the president of the club will not sell him. All the clubs must respect the president, respect Shakhtar, and in the end, they must respect Mudrik, who's one of the best players I saw. I mean, he's been gassing up his tigidi. I saw. The price is so big, the market is depending, is deciding the price, not me. And I can't begrudge them, you know. If you see some of the fees, and he's listed some, not saying some players aren't or aren't worth it, I can't begrudge them for wanting top money. Anthony Grealish, they are players of more than 100 million. And for me, Mudrik does not have less quality than them. Yeah, but the Dutch league is stronger than Shakhtar. And Grealish might not have the numbers, but yeah, the same logic. This is the last two transfers in the past year in more or less the same position. Sancho from Dortmund, we want just respect. The market is deciding the price, not me. It shows which kind of players cost this money. And that's just telling you we've got a young winger. Other people are buying buying and selling young wingers for big money. So we want to be involved. And then he said, you know, when asked about Sa Sana's bold statement, apparently Mudrik told Sports Arena, yes, I read this interview. When I found out about my price, I wasn't just shocked, surprised. I was shocked now. I'm being serious now. You, your advisors, Shakhtar internally, you've had discussions about how much they, they, they want for you, what sort of price you're available to go for. proof here but he, let, let's just humor it and take it at face value potentially and again you got to remember people this is all mind games you know as we gear up to january just like with the ronaldo interview it's all mind games as i said mudrick is speaking with zinchenko's wife obviously he's probably speaking indirectly with zinchenko you know they're doing what they can for arsenal you know he's been speaking to ben jacobs a few months ago you know every week there's a new interview whether it's his agent Shakhtar, or whatever so they're doing what they need to he said, I have a long-term contract with Shakhtar. I give all my strength and the energy so that Shakhtar achieves maximum results. I really hope that my game would bring great benefit to Shakhtar and that clubs from top European championships would be interested in me. I spoke with my agent and I know that in the summer, there were several offers for me from clubs in top European championships, but the club decided not to let me go. And I took it as absolutely normal because I, I fully trust Shakhtar's management. You see, I treat the championship of Ukraine with all respect, but every footballer has a dream to play in a top club and in a top championship. I am no exception. So what does that tell you? I'm doing smash the like button, people. I'm doing my job. I'm acting with integrity, but I want to elevate. Like in life, you can't begrudge people for wanting to elevate. But I'm 100% sure that they are unlikely to buy a player from the championship of Ukraine for 100 million. Sergi Anatoliovki? forgive me for mispronunciation, says the time will come. Maybe so, but I have my opinion that for such an amount, this time will not come soon, maybe never. Again, yeah, because of where you're playing, you know, even if you probably score a million goals in the season. After reading the interview of the director, I will not hide that I was very upset. To the top championship, which I so dreamed of. I can't say that my dream was killed, but wounded, that's for sure. And we've got to remember, everybody's saying everything. Now's the time. Obviously, people are having indirect conversations and there's many moving parts in the transfer, but it's not January. So everybody's it's, it's probably half truths from everyone, from him, from his agent, from Shakhtar, from clubs interested. There's a lot of mind games and, and all these things being played. But I'm a professional. I'm a Shakhtar player. We have a few difficult games left in the championship in which we must win and I'll do... And I will do my best for that. Fair enough, man. That's that's all he can do, people. Allegedly, Arsenal will soon enter into contract negotiations with Charlie Paterno to renew his contract. It's understood the Gunners have the option to activate a two-year extension on the deal, 
Barca are waiting for news and is following the situation. So yeah, let's get that done. Allegedly, Cedric could report Arsenal, sorry, could reportedly sell Cedric in the January transfer window. Villarreal, Fulham, Bayern Leverkusen showed an interest in Cedric over the summer, and there have already been some contacts between the players' agent and clubs interested. And I think he gave a good interview about his dream was always to play for Arsenal. Big up to you for achieving. It's time to go, in it? You know, it really is time to go, respectfully to you. Again, are we weak at right back if Cedric cuts? Probably, but yeah, sorry, people. Drillings are going down. We've got workers over here. Um, but yeah, and apparently... ...interested. Fulham, Bayern Leverkusen, Villarreal are interested in signing Arsenal defender Cedric Suarez in January. Sources have told ESPN. Fulham are believed to be leading the race at this stage, although no formal offer has been submitted. So for you, at least you get to stay in England and London specifically and all those sort of things, really. You can leave with your head held high, Cedric, but for me, you do need to leave. I understand if Arteta wants to keep you as a body, but I don't, respectfully, I don't really have much faith in you. Sources said Cedric is focused on re-establishing himself with Arsenal, lull, but would listen to offers if Mikel Arteta indicated he was no longer part of his plans. Any potential move would likely be along with an option or obligation to sign him permanently. I mean, with him being contracted until 2024, it's probably, can we move him permanently? Because, you know, big up El Nene, I mean, not El Nene, uh, Pablo Marie on his recovery, but we're all hoping that Monza stay up purely because it becomes an obligation to buy him. Bloody hell. stuff but he needs to cut, cut out in it you know i can't begrudge him he's living his dream he's clearly happy at the club he's got a lot of portuguese speakers and things obviously at the club there's a lot of good relationships you're earning a decent amount of money you're living in london from and you're getting on a bit from a life point of view i could i can't begrudge you for wanting to stay but you should have never been brought in really if i'm completely honest with you you know if i'm honest it was a cheap signing same way tommy Asu was me with Cedric when you cut corners you're not going to get players that are really good and with him with Marie with a couple of them it takes a lot of effort to move them on Saka um, has obviously been doing some charity work and has funded 120 life-changing surgeries for children in in Kano Nigeria the operations took place in mid-October and were a success so thankfully thank God that the operations were a success hopefully these kids can you know have no barriers to you know becoming the best human well I say humans Bakayo Saka, man, you know, you don't have to do charity work, but it is nice to see. And obviously, he might play for England, but last time I checked, the name Bakayo and Saka, you know, weren't exactly English names. So he's not forgotten where he's came from and he's giving back. And you don't know what one of these kids go on and do. They might do something greater than football. Or, or something out there, you never know, really. And it's nice to see that it's been a success, really. So, yeah, big up Saka for that, man. That's some real guy stuff. Allegedly, you know, we haven't been linked with the Corinthians defender Robert Renan for a hot minute, but we have again. Renan has been attracting interest from several clubs, including Arsenal, Purdy Express, but there haven't been there hasn't been an official proposal for him, only inquiries which are expected at this time of year. So I wouldn't expect anything anytime soon in his case. What's this? Matt Smith eyes one more go at Arsenal. It's over, bro. He, how much time have you been on the bench and not played? Big up you. Uh, listen, I hope you do it, but it's, you come on now. You, 22 or so. You need to go, man. You've been on a couple of decent loan spells as well. You need to grow up a bit. I know you've been at Arsenal from like eight, nine years of age. You're technically in the first team. It can be hard. You know, you're probably earning a decent wage a week, but it's now time to grow up and play real world football, really. It won't quite be Arsenal, but yeah. Matt Smith says he wants to give it one more go at Arsenal after a string of loan moves. Look at the centre mids we want to bring in. Look at those that are ahead of you. Look, you're not in. You're not in. You're not in the shouts. It's just not going to happen, lad. But again, I don't work for Arsenal. What can I tell you? There's a difference between being patient and being on nonsense. But he said, being patient and needing to wait for your opportunity can be frustrating for any player. And I mean, Mikel Arteta probably, you know, your agent, your parents, you, you know, you're just a body. You didn't even come to get on against Brentford. Young 15-year-old Ethan did. You didn't. When have you played? You've, you've been like the Haylen boys last season where they were just on the bench and not playing. You need to progress. I but I want as many Haylen boys to come through as possible. So I hope to God I'm wrong, you get an opportunity. But I'm, I don't th think Arteta does the lying thing like that beyond the necessaries managers do. I think he's told you specifically, you're not playing ahead of El Nene. Smith Smithrow, 
uh, probably missing out one. They could all play eights ahead of you. And that Fabio Vieira off the bench with Xhaka plays ahead of you. Xhaka and Partey are ahead of you. We want a couple of midfielders. You know, Charlie Patton, no, probably ahead of you. You're, you are good enough to play senior professional football. It's not going to, you know, you might have to wash your own kit and it's not going to quite be the nicest seas of Arsenal. But I don't, I think you're only, at this point, you're frustrating yourself. Needing to wait for an opportunity. And again, I can't begrudge you for wanting to play and learn from Mikel Arteta for what it's worth, you know. But and needing to wait for your opportunity can be frustrating for any player. But the key is how you react to having to be patient. Amen. And that's massive for the boss with the values that he has. You have to find a way to make that frustration a good thing and use it in training to show that you really want it. Sulking and keeping your head down is not going to benefit you in any way. Fact. Every day is an opportunity to press and show the boss that you're ready. So every single time I go with the first team, that's what I try to do. I enjoyed all three of my loans and obviously gained a lot of experience and developed as a player massively from then. But when it came to making a decision on where to play my football this season, I knew I wanted to give it one more go at Arsenal. OK, so we're approaching January, you know, December's around the corner. How much time have you played in the first team? How much time have you been on the bench? Anything can happen. You know, and Eddie, show, Eddie, completely different, but Eddie's shown why patience is, 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 is vital. But sometimes you need to be open to other things. So, yeah, give it one more go, my guy. I think sometimes it can be forgotten that the reason players go out on loan is to develop as a person, as a player, and ultimately come back with a view to make it in the first team. That's what was the ambition for me. I feel like I've done my time out on loan. I could have gone out again, but something about that didn't feel right. So I didn't think it would do me any harm to give it a go and stay here until January at least. So, boy, January at least, keep it. you got to keep moving, my guy. I'm not trying to be harsh, but it's a myth. Bellerin has been voted boss. Shock, horror there, but big up to him. Hendrick's father has denied plans, denied reports of plans to visit Real Madrid. There's no travel scheduled. Arsenal were linked with him a few weeks ago. You know, Chelsea looked like anyone in England, they're going to buy him. PSG are onto him and all these sick Brazilians, they all end up in Spain at Real Madrid. So I don't imagine he'll be any different, but I don't think Arsenal have 50, 60 million to spend on a young 16, 17 year old who can't play here until he's 18 and park that off without addressing more immediate areas. So never give up. We've got Brazilians and that, you know, hopefully Gab Jesus can do something and Martinelli can chat to him and all these things. But myth, uh, absolute, absolute myth. 100 percent. Arsenal player says he's no longer injured and is ready to play. Apparently, you know, I think I read this earlier and he was speaking about how he was almost on the verge of tears and listening to his said 100%, no limitations, smashing balls again. Why? All good. Okay, fair enough. But there was a, there's a, there's a, there's an article where he speaks about, is this it? Yeah. Oh my gosh. So what we can do, if we're going to read that, sorry, folks, we need to switch over to Safari because I'm obviously, I to Safari, um, to, to uh, the Athletic on Safari, and then we go over there. I also think Arsenal's completely off topic, but I think Arsenal, a couple of Arsenal games have been rescheduled as well, people. Um, just because I've got it up here, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I think the Spurs, Spurs and United games have been rescheduled for television people in January, but I just want to see specifically what this guy said. It's what this is it. It's one of the hardest things I've ever done. I was actually like on the border of tears. I know that sounds a bit soft, but I've never had to do that before. I've never had to really listen to my body and feel like maybe it wasn't the right move to push through something because I've pushed through many injuries in my career, many little niggles, and that might have held someone else out. That has never been my MO. So to go against everything that was ingrained in me and look out for myself was challenging and that can be hard in professional sports. And in life, and what, he's the same age as me, 27. Like we're at that weird age now where... Obviously, I think I'm Superman, isn't it? Like, I think I'm Superman. I don't get injured. I don't get ill. I don't have to do this. I don't have to do that. And I, I, as, as a non-footballer, it's a humbling experience. Like, actually, like, when I was a little kid, I only had proper injuries, like swollen ankle, slightly fractured ankle, proper things like that. Now, even we play Sunday League. I wake up the next day, everything's hurting, you know. Just, just the thought of it, you could probably see me grabbing my hamstrings. My word. So, yeah, it makes sense. And it's a humbling experience. And honestly, how you look after yourself defines longevity of life, let alone a footballer. You know, Ronaldo the best example of that. I know that my opportunities are few and far between on the pitch. Damn. 
damn. Also, the way that the game was building up against PSV away, it was a game that I felt like I could have gotten out there and done very well. It was a game that would have played to my to some of my strength, shot stopping, defensive actions. I knew that was an opportunity for me to show myself, and that was part of the reason it was hot. It was so hard for me to go out there and say that I couldn't go. Fair enough, man. Big him up, and I think. Former American goalie has been saying he hasn't improved since he signed for Arsenal and he's, you know, he should look to leave and things. And you might be right, you might be wrong. But what I would say is Matt Turner's not an idiot. You know, you've got Ramsdale, who we just spent 30 million on. You could say current, even though he's not in the squad, in Leno. Bro, you're not playing ahead of him. Like, it's reality of the situation. So big up yourself. Um, this was from yesterday, but yeah, apparently Zinchenko, as well as Xhaka and four or five other players, had a stomach bug in the Wolves game, which makes that even more impressive. Bench Arsenal man pushes for January exit as agent contacts Premier League European suitors. So I think this is just centred around um, Cedric a bit more. Cut, bro. 31 goal play, but at 31, I can't begrudge you. If you want to get your loyalty bonus, get your weekly wages at Arsenal, you're happy in London, it's your dream. Portuguese speakers, Mikel Arteta likes you. It's a nice working environment. I can't begrudge you if you want to do that. But for Arsenal, me cut out, man. Like just cut out and bring a right back. You can do this. You got Tommy As, you got Ben White out there. Maybe bring in one natural out and out right back again. Um, if I'm completely honest with you. Um, where is the article on my man in Rodrigo B Bacon or whatever his name is? That's what we need to be looking at. Shout out to you, look. There we have that. But then again, cold water's kind of been, depending on where you read this, people, cold water's kind of been poured on several, several things. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. That. Uh, do that. Uh, slap that over there. Sorry, folks, but yeah, getting back into Rodrigo. In fact, there is there should be one more thing here that we need to look at as well, in re especially in relation to this, Donny. Shout out to Saka for that. We've already seen that, ain't we, folks? So what's the point showing you lot that again? Um, so yeah, this is why everything's got conflicting reports. What's this? Oh, so we saw that yesterday. I should really be cutting off my old things in that, but yeah. Arsenal and Tottenham both ready to bid 30 million for Rodrigo Beacon. Now, from what I've seen, decent defender, six foot odd, 80 months left on his deal. Could be all right, you know, not a left-sided centre-back, so I don't really believe it. But and, and he's a bit of an exception to the rule in that he's like 26, 27, 28. So he's not like early 20s, mid-20s like the rest of them. So maybe it's a, it's a case of exploiting the fact that he's 18 million, his cut price is what it is. Really? You know, how long have we been following him for? How long has he been at Udinese? But didn't Pablo Marie spend time out there? If the loan manager was out, was, was watching Pablo Marie, maybe he said, oh, you know what? I was doing a loan report for Pablo Marie like you asked me, Gaffer Mikel. And I saw this defender. He's all right. You should have a look at him. I'll put some clips together for you. Then maybe Mikel looked at these clips and said, you know what? The clips are good. Let's, I want you to go watch him. Apparently, he has 18 months left on his contract on New Year's Day. Maybe that's where the Arsenal and Spurs rumours are coming from. Maybe Arsenal or Spurs and or Spurs want him legitimately. You know, he joined Udinese in 2019. He's played over 110 um, uh, games in all comps. Um, apparently, the report claims the 26-year-old, whose current contract expires in 2024, is yet to reach an agreement with Udinese to put on an extension. Maybe there's that. That's where the Arsenal and Spurs and anyone else links. He apparently has been offered a new deal with an improvement in salary, but Biko apparently wants wages on par with the two clubs, two with the club's two biggest stars, Pereira and Delafeo. So that's where you're coming from. And at 26 years of age, if he moves to Arsenal, Spurs, or anyone, he would get better wages than maybe seeking over there. Talks between the players, reps, and Udinese have stopped as a result. Next round of discussions has been pushed at least until the start of the next year, which is around the corner. That has opened the door for interested parties to make a move and reports claim that uh, Premier League trio Everton, Arsenal and Spurs, along with AC Milan, are all interested. It has been further claimed that the three English clubs are willing to table a bid in the region of 13 million to sign him in January. So what happened to the uh, Indica rumours? I don't know, man. If we've done our scouting, then fair play. But then again, it, as I said, it depends where you read because Romano has said it's a myth. You know, Everton are currently not in talks to sign him. Uh, Arsenal and Spurs have been linked, but it appears that interest from the Toffees have died down. 
Apparently, Romano said Everton were interested in signing, obviously, my man during the summer, but have since called their interest. There are no talks ongoing between Udinese and any other club. So that tells you everything. Despite what you might be reading elsewhere, there are currently no talks between Arsenal and Spurs and Udinese for Rodrigo Rodrigo Bico. What I can tell you is that he was an option for Everton last summer, but it's gone quite easy. So that could be probably put to bed quickly. So that's two defenders, but we've been linked with centre half. That might show you he's still committed to sign the centre half. I mean, I know we didn't get Lissandro Martinez, and he do. He can, but when you looked at the time on transfer mark, the bulk of his games were as a centre half. He played twelve times at the time in the summer for playing left back. Now Arteta can rework and make man play there, but him being left sided and playing the bulk of his games at centre half. You know, when we must have been scouting him, he's probably playing centre-half for Ajax at the time. So we probably do want a centre-back if we could be real specific, a left-sided. But if a top-quality right-sided becomes available, it is well, it is. Sorry, there's building work going on. Apparently, Fabrizio Romano has provided an update, people, on the recent speculation between Arsenal and Mudrick. Mudrick would love to go to the Premier League, but his club won't be letting him go for the cheap. He would love to go to the Premier League. That is not a secret. He would love to go. He was dreaming of Premier League football when Everton offered in August. Bournemouth have been interested as well as Brentford. Arsenal have been interested. In August, they wanted him. They had no, they had negotiations, but no official bid in August because Shakhtar wanted more than 50, 45 million or 50 million. Now it is way more than this. I understand it is more than 60 to 65 million for Mudrick to move in Jan. My sources at Shakhtar the next tell me there is no bid on the table. They say that we know about the interest. We know they are keen on Mudrick. Arsenal now, the player would be open, in, open to move in January because he wants a new experience in a new club. And then, you know, again, I'm tired of seeing these reports, people. But when we did look at things, you know, apparently he said, I think every guy dreams... This was this has to be Ben Jacobs' comments. Yes, I think every guy dreams about playing in the Premier League. Arsenal's a very good team, very good coach. I like the way they play. Yes, from my side, I can't say no, but a transfer is not only my decision. And yesterday we saw, we, we, you know, yesterday or the day before, the interview with Zinchenko's wife, the sound bites where he said he'd pick us over Real Madrid, kind of alluded to he's more likely to play here and that he kind of wants to move in January. It is what it is. He's got eight goals and eight assists from 16 outings, people. Good for 21-year-old. He scored three goals and got two assists in the Champions League. And yeah, this was his comments from earlier. He said, from a purely hypothetical perspective, if there was an option of being a bench player for Real Madrid or a starter for Arsenal, I'd probably choose Arsenal. And again, he told the journalist who is married to Zinchenko, who they're all from the same country, Zinchenko plays for Arsenal. Couldn't be more coincidental, you know. Like, obviously, I'm not privy to Ukrainian media. Clearly, Miss Zinchenko is a big dog in this thing, does the interviews. But it can't just be only her, you know. It's, there's probably other articles, other, other journalists he could have spoken to. Why would you pick her? Maybe it's because she's great at her job, which probably is it. But is it because of who she's married to? Not the fact that she's married to Zinchenko, but he plays for Arsenal. You're linked with Arsenal. I'm not too sure. So, yeah, he said, I check them. I, I check on them on my score and I know I can check on them when they're playing. I also watch them too. They are a very dynamic side in general, not just in control and possession, but also scoring goals. I mean, he can say all of this till he's blue in the face, in it? We don't put the bid down. We don't dot I's and cross T's. You don't play for Arsenal, in it? Um, this has to be the same thing, really. Shakhtar are not selling Mudrik for 40 million euros in brackets 34.8 or 45 million, 39 million. They want around 60 to 65, which is about 52 to 56, not less than that. It's not going to be easy, but Arsenal are still interested. They have contacts with his agent, so it could be an interesting opportunity for them. So what does that tell us, people?